This is Matthew McConaughey. Natalie Portman. James Patterson. Mike Lee in Black. And you are listening to Five Questions with Dan Chamel. Steve, welcome to Five Questions. Great to be with you. What were some of the key moments early in your career that shaped who you are as a business person today? Uh, when I was in college, I was I, I kind of first learned about the idea of the internet and got excited about trying to pursue that. Back then, uh, nobody was backing college students in terms of venture capital, and there really weren't internet companies to go to. So I had to you know, work for some other big companies, Procter & Gamble, PepsiCo, for a while. But I was on that path relatively early. I was inspired particularly by a book by Alvin Toffler called The Third Wave that talked about what was going to be this new electronic frontier. And it seemed exciting to me. I, I wanted to be part of it. I wonder what wave we're on now. <laughs> Things are changing so fast. It's hard to even keep up. Yeah, absolutely. No, the, the, I think the wave we're on now, though, is is how this next generation of, of the Internet uh, is kind of when the Internet meets the real world. It was it was before the first phase was trying to get everybody online. The second phase has been apps and software riding on top of the Internet, things like Facebook and many others. I think this next phase is really where it, the Internet inter intersects with healthcare and food and agriculture and a lot of other industries and intersects with a lot of other places around the country. It'll be less about Silicon Valley, more about other parts of the country, what we call rise of the rest. And that's really what's going to happen in this in this next phase. Yeah. And people talk about blockchain, metaverse, crypto, NFTs. VR, AR, you know, there's just so many different technologies that are that are kind of changing how we work and live. And it's still really early. And it's I, still I, early. It's still early. And also, I would say on some of some of those things, I think any one technology is less interesting than how technologies converge mm. with business models to improve how we do important aspects of our lives and the process, reimagine big industries and, and create big opportunities for for disruptors all across the country. Definitely. And like you, like I study business workplace trends and i just love like all these different changes that are kind of evolving culture and how we live and work what would you say are the biggest business and cultural changes that have affected how entrepreneurs specifically create and scale companies it really ties in with the work we've done over the last decade around rise of the rest and even the, the book I, I just wrote about rise of the rest i think you know, a decade ago you wanted to be part of the innovation economy most people thought you had to be in silicon valley that's where most of the money was. I think we're seeing a, an acceleration of innovation in different cities all around the country, dozens of different different cities that are emerging as startup hubs, which gives people the ability to start and scale companies anywhere, and also gives them the ability to be closer to some of the core partners that might be key in terms of being successful, whether it be healthcare or other kinds of, uh, of business. And we've got lots of examples of people that just were living their lives, stumbled onto a, a problem that, that created an opportunity and then decided to build a build a company. And we're just trying to encourage as much of that as possible in as many parts of the country as, as possible. Yeah, and speaking of the Rise of the Rest tour and the book, I mean, you're obviously a very savvy business person, but you even learned a lot during your travels. I mean, for me, like I would never have thought even 10 years ago that I would go to Montana and that there would be business activity there. But what I found is that there's been such disbursement of talent and ideas because of the past several years with our, all of our, these cultural changes, remote work, et cetera. So what have you learned that's new about entrepreneurship and how people are busy building businesses? Well, so we started some of this uh, work about a decade ago. I was chairing an initiative for President Obama called Startup America and was traveling around the country seeing what was happening. But as you said, things really accelerated during the pandemic because suddenly I mean, a lot of people were rethinking life and work, where they want to live, how they want to live, where they want to work, how they want to work. Some more, obviously more people working remotely. That's resulted in a, a slowing of the brain drain of people leaving cities to go to the coast and actually a boomerang of people returning, which is fueling what I think can be this next ways of of, uh, of innovation all across the country. The last decade also, there's 1,400 new venture firms have started up, which is a big surprise in these rise of the rest of cities. Uh, so more entrepreneurs are starting to get the capital they need to start and scale in dozens of cities all across the country. And it's exciting to see. I think bodes well for this next decade, uh, including, you know, kind of the, as we think about this next uh, next chapter for our own country. Yeah, and it's good for society because it doesn't mean that, oh, I have to move to Silicon Valley to be able to start a business now. And I think that kind of gives people hope. And and now that res resources have been more dispersed across the country, that's kind of enabled people to kind of live their dream and, and innovate. 
Um, and, and, and some of that ties in with uh, this notion that for some businesses, it's, it's better to be in a different city. It's not just a cost of living yeah. issue or maybe a lifestyle family consideration, although they're perfectly legitimate. There's some reasons that the certain cities are advantaged certain kinds of companies. For example, we, we backed a company in Chattanooga, Tennessee called Freightways. that has got like a Bloomberg data platform for the trucking and logistics industry. I didn't know it until we were in Chattanooga, but most of the big trucking companies are headquartered in Chattanooga. So that's actually the best place in the country to you know, to, to be. And we're seeing more and more of those uh, examples, which is why I re really wrote the book. I wanted to tell the stories of these entrepreneurs building these great companies and also the cities that are being renewed because of the work of these entrepreneurs. Definitely. And I, I do see that trend continuing of people kind of, again, more disbursement, more money kind of moving in and out of different cities and, and areas and even suburbs. Um, aside from like, obviously, location is not as much of a variable as it used to be, as you discuss in terms of your tour and your book and everything that you're working on. But what do you think are the current and maybe future challenges entrepreneurs are going to have that they're going to need to overcome? Depends on what you're trying to do. But I think one of the key ones for a lot of the industries that are ripe for disruption is it's not really about the technology or the software. It's, that's sort of the table stakes. The real value is created in terms of the partnerships you create around the technology to, in, to have systems level change. Healthcare, for example, it's one sixth of the economy. It's a huge industry, uh, but you have to get hospitals to integrate it and doctors and nurses to use it and health plans to pay for it and governments to permit it. There's some, a more complicated set of challenges and that's going to require much more of a focus. It actually advantages these rise of the rest of entrepreneurs if they're close to some of these key partners, the Mayo Clinic, Clinic in Minnesota or the Cleveland Clinic in, in Ohio, they, they will have an advantage in this in this next wave because of their uh, because of their location. So partnerships would definitely be a, a, a critical one. That makes a lot of sense, especially partnerships with you know larger brands with that that have a lot of resources. And you, as as someone who invests in and in, in, you know helps incubate and, and grow companies, you probably facilitate a lot of these partnerships as well. Absolutely. No, when we invest, we uh, that's where the work begins. We're really trying to leverage our, our network uh, and, and to help these companies succeed, whether it be attracting talent or attracting customers or attracting partners or attracting you know, later stage you know, capital. There's lots of things that go into building companies. I saw that obviously firsthand building America Online AOL in the early days of the Internet. And we try to apply some of those lessons to the companies we, we back at Revolution. And what's your best piece of career advice? Figure out what you're passionate about and jump into it. You know, the, the, I, I stumbled onto this relatively early when I was in in, in college, and I, I pursued the dream of building the internet for you know, a couple of decades. A, a lot of skeptics, including my own parents, were, didn't think it was such a good idea. It seemed pretty risky, but I just believed in it and and, and stuck with it and assembled a team. Uh, that shared that passion. I think entrepreneurship is a team sport. Sometimes we celebrate the entrepreneur too much and and the, the overall team you know, too little. I also think it's important to, to do it with others. There's an African proverb that's always animated my work is you want to go, you know, uh, quickly, you can go alone, but if you want to go far, you must go together. Who are the people that can help you, whether it's within your company or partnerships around your company that really allows you to scale? And the last point would be, Find a problem that you see and and solve it. Problems equal opportunities. And we've, we've seen entrepreneurs all over the country who see a certain problem, like Eric Lukowski in Chicago. His wife was diagnosed with breast cancer. He got different diagnoses. He said, this is a data problem. Started a company, company called Tempest to, 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 to solve that problem. Or three founders in the Washington, D.C. area were graduating from college, didn't like the food that was available in their neighborhood. So they created this company, Sweetgreen, that, that we backed. It's now a, becoming a national brand, of, you know, went public at a $3 billion valuation. These, these are things that, again, kind of normal people see as opportunities because there's something that's not really working. And they say, I think I can turn this into a company. And what we're trying to do with Rise of the Rest is make it easier for more people in more places who have those ideas, have that sort of light bulb moment, not just to think about it, but to do something about it, to turn that into a company. That's such a powerful mission and such great advice. So thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Dan.